Okay, so here's the circuit that we're given. It has an AC source and a 80 ohm resistor on the primary side of the transformer. On the secondary side of the transformer, it's got a capacitor and a resistor. And the question says, find the average power absorbed by the load to the right of the AB terminal. So that's by the combination capacitor and resistor. Big picture, whenever you're solving power problems, is you want to start off by determining the voltage across and the current through whatever load and do that in RMS units. So our first step is to transform this from the time domain into the frequency domain. So let's find out what that impedance is of the capacitor. So it's going to be one over J omega C. So that's going to be one over J. Our omega, of course, is everything multiplied by T. So in this case, it's going to be one over two high 60. And then our capacitor is one over 600 pi, which are kind of nice. So the, the pi's cancel and we end up with one over J to the one fifth. So that's going to be equal to minus J, right? Because one over J is negative J and then one over one fifth is just five. So that's the impedance of the capacitor. Second is the impedance of the entire load. That whole load looks like this capacitor that has an impedance of minus J5 in parallel with this resistor that has an impedance of five. So it's gonna be everything to the right of those two terminals of our AB terminals is gonna look like, I'm gonna call this Z load, is gonna look like five in parallel with minus J5. So we know that's <clears throat> two things in parallel are product over sums. So that gives us minus J25 is the product and five minus J5 is the sum. And because it's an impedance, we want to write the results from our calculator in rectangular form. So that gives us 2.5 minus J2.5. And now we can write our entire circuit so far in the frequency domain. So this is 120. There's no angle here. So it's just plain old real number 120. We've got our 80 ohm resistor up on top. We've got this transformer over here that's a four to one. And we've got this equivalent impedance right here. So the next step is we're going to find the Thevenin equivalent to the right of those two terminals. So that is going to look like same source, same 80 over here. And we know that the rule is that it looks like whatever our load resistor, our load impedance was divided by N squared. So that's going to be equal to 2.5 minus J 2.5 over our N squared. And our N squared is one to four squared. So remember that we define our N, it's equal to the secondary divided by the primary, which is one over four, just by convention. So this gives us a total of 40 minus J 40 equivalent impedance. And everything to the right of those terminals represents the load as seen on the primary side of this transformer. Now, remember that our overall goal, whenever we're doing power problems, is to find the current in root mean squared values through it and the voltage across it. To find the real power, we firstly need to find the complex power phaser. Everything is run by the complex power phaser. And the complex power phaser is defined to be the voltage across our load multiplied by the complex conjugate of the current through it. So we need to find our voltage across our load. You know, this is of our load, this is of our load, and this is of our load. This is just a voltage divider. So the voltage across our load is gonna be the source voltage times the impedance that we're trying to find the voltage across divided by the sum of that plus our other impedance. And that goes in the calculator and, and out pops 48 minus J 24 
Bolt RMS. The current's even easier. That's equal to the voltage of the impedance. And so we've got a total of 120 volts RMS divided by an impedance. That's a total of 80 plus 40 minus J40. The calculator says that's equal to 0 0.9 plus J0 0.3 amps RMS. And the only time we multiply, we ever multiply phasors together is to, is to find the complex power phasor. And the complex power phasor is equal to our voltage times the complex conjugate of our current, which is 48 minus J24 times 0 0.9 minus J0 0.3. That's our complex conjugate of our current phasor. And that is going to be equal to 36 minus J36. And we measure the complex power phasor in volt amps. So now we can take this apart and realize that the first part is the real, that's power average. And the second part, this is our power reactive. And since the question asks how much average power is absorbed by the load, the answer is the power is equal to the real part of our complex power phasor. So that's going to be equal to 36, and the correct units are watts. And that's the answer to the first problem.